All right, well, we're going to go over the first homework assignment that we had from this section, um, and then we're going to do some of the homework that's due today. So uh, these first ones here, uh, everyone did pretty well on this, and there was a lot of responses, actually. Pretty much everybody did the homework. It's nice work. Uh, 1 over 3 to the X from the right. Uh, this is where we get into, like, our top number is obviously positive over 3 is positive, and then we're approaching 0 from the right. And so that would give me an undefined in the denominator, which is a good thing to look for whenever you're talking about uh, a limit going to infinity. Since this is positive and it's coming from the right-hand side, our x would be positive. So it's a positive over a positive times a positive, which tells you it's going to be going to positive infinity. And that's really it. If I'm looking at this one, go ahead. Anytime we have an X in the denominator, it's one of the ones where you're going to look at it being either a positive or a negative infinity that our limit is going to, especially as it's approaching zero. So think about if I was just to plug zero in here. If I plug five divided by two times zero, that would give me 5 over 0, which would be undefined, because I can't def divide by 0, right? And so what that always is going to create is a vertical asymptote, which says that as I get closer and closer to 0, if this is just x, not x minus or plus anything, but as I'm getting closer and closer to 0, my y is getting bigger and bigger. If I want to graph that in Desmos, so if I just graph it in Desmos, do 5 over 2x, and look at the graph, you see that as my x is getting closer and closer to 0, so here we're at 2, and y is 1.25, but as I get closer and closer, here I'm at 0.5, and y is 4. Here I'm at 0.29, and y is 8.5. But it just keeps getting further and further up. And I'll never actually touch zero. I just get closer and closer to it for my x. And the y just keeps going higher and higher. So it creates this asymptote here where we never touch. And so anytime you see it divided by x and you're approaching zero, you know it's going to have that asymptote. In this case, we we're looking at it from the left-hand side. So think about the numbers that are to the left of zero. If I have a traditional number line, negative 2, negative 4, all the numbers to the left of zero are negative. This is a positive. This is a positive. My x would have to be a negative since I'm coming from that left-hand side towards zero. So this would be a positive divided by a negative. It tells us that this is going to be negative infinity. For number three, we're following the same type, but we're not going to zero, we're going to two. If I look at this, two minus two would give me a zero in the denominator. So if I'm approaching 2 from the left, that means it's going to be, say, 1 minus 2. That'll produce a negative in the denominator and positive up top. So it's going to be a positive divided by a negative, which tells us this goes to negative infinity. Number 4, if I'm approaching 3 from the right, it's going to be numbers bigger than 3 minus 3. That gives us a positive number. Positive over a positive is going to give us infinity. Number 5. 2x over x plus 8. Again, if I plug in a negative 8, then it's going to be like negative 7.5 plus 8. 
and this would be a negative up top. So this would be a negative divided by a positive. But we can't just assume that these limits all go to infinity because we have this asymptote. It's a good thing to look for, but especially whenever you have an x on the top, it's still a good thing to look at the graph and see. So if I do 2x over x plus 8, and I look as I'm approaching negative 8, you're going to see that this asymptote is created as we get closer and closer to negative 8. And so it is going to go to either infinity or negative infinity. It's always a good way to check and see if that's what you end up with. If I'm coming from the right-hand side, this is a negative divided by a positive. So this is going to be going to negative infinity. When I look at my graph, as I come from the right, my numbers keep get, keep getting lower and lower. So they do go to negative infinity. Number six, if I'm approaching negative five from the left, then that's going to make this bottom a negative number. And the top is going to be a negative number. So negative divided by a negative gives us a positive infinity. Number seven, it's x minus seven, yes. If I look at number seven, there is no plus or minus. And so this would mean that it needs to be going towards the same thing uh, from both directions. So if a limit does exist for number seven, it would mean that both sides have to be going to infinity or to negative infinity. Uh, when I look at number seven, it's four over x minus seven squared. And so if I think of a number that I can plug in to give a negative, six, if I plug six in for x, that would mean I'm coming from the left. Six minus seven gives me negative one. Negative one squared is a positive one. 4 divided by 1 is positive. So that would be going to a positive infinity because it gives us a positive number from the left. Choose a number coming from the right. 8 minus 7 gives us 1. 1 squared is 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. Still positive, so this would be going to infinity. So what I'm going to end up with is a graph where, say this is 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to have an asymptote out at 7, positive 7. And it's be going up like this from the left and from the right. Both sides are going to be going up. And if you graph that in Desmos, you're going to see that. That's because of the square. We can never square anything and keep a negative number. Looking at number 8, kind of the same thing. We're approaching 0. I have a negative on the top. Think about if I put a negative 1 in here. This would be a negative 1 squared. That gives us 1. Negative 1 plus 1 gives us 0. So we'd be dividing by 0, which creates a problem. So we're going to have to choose a different negative number. Choose negative 2. Negative 2 squared is going to give us a positive 4 in the denominator. And then negative 2 plus 1 gives us a negative 1. So I have a negative on top divided by a negative in the bottom. So that would be going to infinity from the left. Choose a number from the right-hand side. If I choose Z, uh, 1 from the right-hand side, 1 squared is 1. 
1 plus 1 is 2, so I have it from 1 and 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 1 over 2 is a negative 1 half. So I had it going to positive infinity and negative infinity, which it can't be doing both if it's a two-sided limit, since there's no plus or minus here. So our limit does not exist. Number nine, we have two over three, and then this is x to the one third. I'm coming from the right hand side as it approaches zero. So it means I'd be plugging a positive number in here. This is positive, so it stays positive. It goes to infinity. For part B, I'd be plugging a negative number. So if I plug in, say, negative uh, 16, the cube root of negative 16, or negative 16 to the one third, is 2. I'm sorry, let's do 8, because that would be 2. So if I plug in negative 8, the cube root of 8, negative 8, is negative 2. This is a positive, now divided by a negative. So this one would go to negative infinity from the left. Number 10, we have a positive, and it's coming from the right-hand side, so it's going to be divided by a positive number, so that goes to positive infinity. For part B, it's 2 over a negative, and it's a fifth root, so we can take that root of a negative, and it would stay negative, that goes to negative infinity. Number 11, this one's almost the same, except that it's asking for us, us for a two-sided limit, which means both sides have to be going to the same thing. If I look at this, this is an x squared, which means no matter what I plug in from the left or right of zero, it's always going to turn it positive. So the fifth root doesn't even matter anymore because I'm making that positive by squaring it to both sides are going to go to infinity. Number 12 is the same exact thing. I'm squaring whatever it is. So if it's a negative 5, it squares and gives me a positive number. Take the cube root. It doesn't matter. It'll stay positive. That goes to infinity as well. Let me try to pick out a hard one from our homework. This is basically more the same. Um, you're just kind of plugging in numbers and seeing what it would give you. Kind of the same thing here in 23 through 26. Um, we'll do one of these where it's uh, graphing the rational function. Let's just do uh, 35. Wait, you guys had to do evens, right? Let's, let's do uh, 38. So for 38, uh, you set up a long division problem. You're doing x cubed, and then make sure to fill in plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. And then that's divided by x squared. see what okay what do I multiply x squared by to get x to the third we we'll multiply by an x so then x squared times x is x to the third and I subtract it 
that gives me zero. Bring down the zero x squared. What do I multiply x squared by to get zero x squared? That's a zero. There's really nothing you can do with that. And so I'm kind of done right here. It actually went super fast. I'm done with this because I'm multiplying by zero x squared. And then I can't make x squared come back down 10x. So this zero x squared doesn't even have to be there. Because zero times anything just disappears. And then our remainder would be, you don't have to put the zero x in. The remainder is just one over x squared. So now whenever I graph this, I can get a rough idea of my graph based off of what I just did. What I'm going to find is that this creates my vertical asymptote, my remainder. And this creates an oblique asymptote because it is a uh, variable. So you just think about plotting the line y equals x. That starts at 0, 0. Line y equals x starts at 0, 0. Goes up to 1, 1, 2, 2. And so on. That creates an asymptote. So I should make that a dotted line. And then to find what my vertical asymptote would be, I set my denominator equal to zero. X squared equals zero. That tells me that zero is my vertical asymptote. So I'll do a dotted there as well. And then my graph has to be between these two. So it's going to come down like this and go off like that. And then the same thing down here. And I'm done. just finding our asymptotes, we can come up with a basic graph. doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to have your asymptotes in place in order to see what your basic graph is going to look like.